What's up guys, Nick here back with another video and today I want to talk about Plex media servers. More importantly, how you build one, what you need, what you don't need and really how simple it is. So let's go. Alright, so after that really enthusiastic intro, let's sort of cut down to the basics. What is a Plex media server? If you didn't catch it in my other videos, I kind of mentioned it a little bit. Plex is an app free to use that basically categorizes your entire personal media collection into a Netflix-like experience, really. And for people such as myself, who's kind of gotten a bit sick of, I guess, Netflix and not having all the content that I want to watch at the one time, I decided to sort of make my own Netflix of sorts. And that's where Plex comes in. So the two things you really need for a Plex media server is a computer, a piece of machinery with a CPU, and something to store all your media on, so a hard drive. And so that's pretty simple. So when I so first started using Plex, which is like four or five years ago, I just pretty much used what I had lying around, which was this beast of a laptop. It's nothing special, it's just an old HP laptop that I was using at the time. Uh, for uni or whatever. It worked. Why? It had a hard drive and it had a CPU, as all computers do. As time went on, obviously my media collection grew, as would anyone's. The computer got old and it started to chug. But why would it start chugging? If all I'm doing is watching movies and TV shows, why does the computer get slow? And that's because Plex, and this is what makes it such a great app, transcodes your videos. What does that mean? So transcoding is basically when a media file isn't supported by what you're watching on. Say, for instance, my Android TV can't process certain types of audio streams. What Plex will do is it will realize that it can't handle that audio stream and it will transcode it to be something that the TV can read, which is very CPU intensive. But for those of you starting out, if you have a laptop lying around, wipe it. It's a good option. You know, it costs no money, but I would not spend money on a laptop and use that as a purpose-built Plex media server. You might think it's a good idea at the time, but later on, you're gonna run into bottlenecks. Now, this is why building your own sort of dedicated media server is probably the easiest and the safest option. So what do we need when we're building one? Well, you really need to look at three important factors. That is the CPU, because obviously it needs to be powerful enough to handle all your media files, and you wanna kind of future-proof yourself, don't buy a dud. You need to think of the case, Will it hold enough hard drives to store my media? But you need to keep that in mind. You don't want to sort of bottleneck yourself there. And then you need the motherboard to obviously support those hard drives. So I'm going to back up a bit and I'm going to show you what I built. All right, so this is what I built. And yes, this is a hell of a lot bigger than the laptop that I used to use. but. This is a server and we want, it to, we want to make it look cool at the same time, so why not? So what have I chosen here? So the case is a fractal design case and it's an R5. Um, the reason I got this case, more specifically one, it sort of blends in, it's not too showy, but it still looks kind of cool, nice and sleek. But also because it comes standard with eight hard drive cages, which is really great for me because I have quite a large media library. Currently only using four of them, 24 terabytes, but obviously I've got some expansion there. That's really important. You want to buy a case that you can expand with. That's why it's so big. One of the hot tips is when building media server, the most money you spend on a single part, other than the hard drives, which should be the most singularly in, which should be the most expensive singular item. Yeah, that makes sense. That you buy uh, would be the case. So now this case, I think came into roughly $170. I'll link it down below along with everything else I mentioned in this video, and I think that's a great bargain. So, because this isn't a gaming machine, we really only worry about the hard drive space. Getting in close up, the motherboard I have is an Asus B250 motherboard. Why did I get that one? Because it was under $100, I think it came to roughly $89, and it came standard with six SAR supports. In terms of CPU, I've gone with a Core i5, quad core, 7th gen. I'll link the exact model down below. I chose that because you get really good bang for your buck. It's quad core, which is great for transcoding. The more cores, the better, the faster it's gonna work. Everything else is pretty standard. 16 gig of RAM, not too important. I'm running Windows 10 on this bad boys, but nothing else apart from Plex Media Server, so whatever, 16 gigs just to be safe. One really important thing that I recommend to all of you is that you buy a fast SSD. I'm using an M2 
Samsung to store your OS on the Plex Media Server itself and all the sort of metadata, so the images and all that sort of stuff. It just makes your server load incredibly quickly on across all of your devices. It also helps with transcoding speeds if that's the drive that you use it on. This isn't by all means a be all and end all. You can sort of chop and change this to your heart's desire. I've gone with a really large case because it feels safer to have all this extra space if I want to upgrade more bits. But you can buy a tiny case as well, even if it's got one or two hard drive base, whatever. You just put massive hard drives in them. Solution, easy. But for those of you out there, I would recommend this kind of a build. It's a relatively cheap case, under $200. It looks awesome. The motherboard is cheap as chips, 80 bucks. The CPU, again, is under 300. The hard drives, whatever. You can chop and change, put whatever you got lying around in there for the time being. So it's a, in terms of starting and building your own Plex Media Server, my recommendations would be start with what you've got. If you don't want to spend money, don't. A laptop or any sort of computer lying around will serve you very well. But if you want to invest in it, this is definitely the way to go. There's no bloatware, nothing, no crap on this computer. It literally just runs Windows 10 with Plex Media Server. That is all. And I've had no hiccups. This thing plays all my 4K media files. I can play them anywhere in the world on any device and it works perfectly. Anyway guys, that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed watching, hit that thumbs up button down below. And don't forget everything I mentioned in this video, the case, CPU, hardware, all that is linked down below in the description if you want to check it out. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see my latest videos. Hit me up in the comments below with anything maybe I missed, maybe things I could try that could improve my server build or any questions. Until the next video, I'll catch you guys later.